Hey everyone, thanks for coming back. It's me, Katie from Bobby Hair Studio. Today I'm gonna to teach you how I do a level eight bleach root, kind of all over color correction to make anybody who's a natural level eight all the way white blonde. So here what I'm doing is I'm just cutting off a few inches she asked me to because you can see those ends. She wanted a good cut. So because she has curly hair, I am cutting much lower than expected because the hair is just gonna pop up just like that. And we're getting rid of some old length because we know that that's just gonna fry off anyways when we do our bleach out. And so we may as well just get rid of it right now. So my client's overall goal is she wants to be completely white everywhere. She doesn't want to root and she wants to do the maintenance every five to eight weeks for her bleach out, which is always what I recommend for my clients because if they keep it well maintained, then they're not going to have any banding or breakage in their hair whenever they come get their roots done. If you're a beginner to bleach outs, this is the best kind of client to have because they have a naturally light color so you won't need a really heavy bleach, which means that if you use something like a seven volume and a high quality bleach like Blonde Me, you will get to a beautiful white blonde if you mix correctly and saturate correctly. And you won't have to worry about crazy orange undertones, so this is a good beginner level of hair to practice bleach roots on. Now, the only thing that does make this super difficult here is the fact that she does have old bleach highlights that are lifted to like a level 9, 10, and we don't want to bust those off. So today's session is going to be done in a way that I typically do my color corrections, I'm doing a full bleach out, and I'm doing a platinum card technique. Here I will be doing my four sections that I typically do. Now one mistake that I did make was I made my back sections a little bit too wide. I should have separated a little further behind the ear between the back and the front sections so that I don't have to split up the back sections into multiple pieces, which I end up having to do later if you'll see that. Just make your back sections a little skinnier and your front sections a little wider and then your foiling time will be much faster than mine was today. Because I foiled for two hours. That's how long this process takes to just put the foil in the hair. This is a long day. This is why these processes cost a lot of money, guys. Number one thing to remember is saturation is key and you always got to remember the underlying pigment in someone's hair. So that's why a level eight is perfect. She's gonna have naturally a light yellow color, so we can use Schwarzkopf Blonde Me, seven volume and cool additive, and it will lift her to a gorgeous white blonde. My ratio, I don't really mix to a measured ratio, which I know is a little bit of a no-no. I mix to consistency. When I want it to go a little bit slower, like in the back, I do lift to a slightly creamier consistency. And when I want it to be a thicker, quicker lift, I will mix it to a heavier, more Greek yogurt-like consistency for when I move to the front, because then it will lift a little bit faster. I'm also leaving my foils open here because I want to let a little bit of air get to them so they don't get too hot too fast. And in the front foils, I will be closing up my foils and folding them so I can maintain the heat and insulate my foils so they move a little faster. With each section here, what's important to note is I am fully coating the root area. And then what I'm doing is I'm pulling down all of the hair into a foil and I'm sectioning out any of those super light blonde pieces. Now, because of the underneath section has so much of our natural color, I'm able to basically paint all the way down and saturate almost her entire length for the most part when it comes to underneath. But you're gonna see with a piece like this, I have a big blonde piece in the side there. I'm gonna go right up to that zone, paint a little bit over and pull that piece out of the foil so it stays completely away from the rest of the bleach. Then I'm going to be painting down and blending into the rest of those blonde ends, pulling them aside and folding up my foil. When I add my cool additive, I only add really like a couple of grams because it's pretty strong, so I don't really need a ton of it. But what's important to note with all of these processes that I'm doing is this is sped up. This is a two hour process just to put in these foils. So it is a really long process. Your client's gonna be there basically for the whole day. She was here for about five hours because she does have a light color, but had she had like a level one or a two color or even level four, like she would be here for the whole day and I would be charging accordingly for sure. 
important to keep your thin sections really, really thin and really consistent with each other so that you have a consistent lift everywhere because even though everything looks very even when it's in the foil, when you wash out the hair, it's going to look a little bit disastrous if you didn't evenly saturate everywhere and get everything to the same level and lift. You're going to notice orange areas versus white areas and that's when you can't really go back in and fix stuff like that. So make sure that when you're applying you take your time and you really really go with very thin sections. You be very consistent. The thinner the section the lighter the hair lifts. So even with a color like this I use paper thin sections because I want her to lift to like a natural platinum white that requires very little toner maintenance. So here I did a time lapse of the rest of my application. It split into four sections. These two back sections are too wide, so I split them into three, and then I brought them back together into two. I made sure to coat my perimeter with bleach before I started smaller sections like this, so that I don't have to go back in where there's all those tight foils and do all of that. Then I did the sides. And with a light color like this, you can definitely put on the roots at the same time. With a darker color, I wouldn't put the root on at the same time because it's gonna lift to a different level. This is how I individually put in all of my foils so you can get a closer look. I've painted on the root, now I'm painting in sideways and if I want to get like little low lights, I turn my brush so it's kind of vertical and I paint down individual highlights and low lights and I pull everything that's highlighted out of the side. And you can see around her face I am closing up my foil so that she's not so exposed to the fumes of the bleach. But on the opposite side I don't really care if they're closed too much. I've done a few heads where I haven't done as consistent foils or I haven't done as thin of foils as this and it just hasn't turned out exactly perfect like I wanted it to. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and you kind of need to be to be a blonde specialist because your blondes will notice the imperfections. Her whole color is going in now and she's going to process for a little bit. In this next clip, I'm gonna show you what a finished foil looks like. So I'm opening up the foil, the whole thing looks like it's blue. And that's because the cool additive, but that's what I want. I don't want it to look blonde, I don't want it to look white, I want it to actually look blue when I have cool additive. That means that the hair is white. If you're a little unsure, you can scrape away the bleach, and that's what I do with a couple of the foils in here as well. But this is also how I remove the bleach and bring it down towards the ends of the hair so that I can very, very gently lift a little bit of toner or half a level of lift out of those previously bleached ends. My apprentice is holding up the foils for me in the area that I know is finished and I am just massaging down the old residue bleach which basically has almost no power in it but it's just enough for me to kind of lighten up or cool down those blonde ends already so that they match with the rest of this color. This is an important step to do and uh, if you don't then you're going to have to do a wet balayage at the sink or you're going to have really yellow looking ends and a really beautiful cool white looking top so this is very important to do. Always wear gloves with this step because you are working with a corrosive material. You can see a little better here how blue each of my foils look. I'm scraping away basically all of the bleach, making sure that if there's any little low light pieces that are still in there that I didn't really correctly judge on their lightness, I'm making sure to really, really saturate them and to bring them into the whole group of the hair so that they get that little bit of heat and a little bit of insulation so they can lift a little better. Always make sure to wipe your client's neck as well because hot bleach like this will end up kind of liquefying and it could drip into the inside of their cape. So just make sure to clean up as you're going and make sure your client is comfortable. And I would never use more than a 20 volume developer on the scalp when it comes to Schwarzkopf Blondie anyways. I always find just low and slow, it will lift. It will keep going if you've done it right.
So here I've reached up to the top areas, which went in last before the front, obviously, and they're getting ready to come out. So I'm pulling them out, making sure everything is lifted to the right level. And then what I'm going to be doing is taking the backwards bib that's on her back right now. They're the Framar ones. I absolutely love them because they do two jobs. They protect the back of your chair and your client's back. And also what you can do here is flip up the back and use it to insulate your bleach while it's still processing like what I'm doing here. And a little fast forward as she has finished processing in her foils and now we're just letting the ends catch up to the rest of the hair in a very gentle old bleach. We've washed her out here. Look at that gorgeous pure lift you guys. That's the kind of lift you want to see when you're going for a white blonde. There is almost no pigment in that hair but there's just enough to make sure that it's still healthy. My formula for a perfect white blonde always consists of a violet and a gold. So I use the Schwarzkopf TBH 1051, 1019 and 6 volume in the lotion because I find the lotion mixed with TBH holds a little better when you have brand new bleach in there. The 1051 is a 10 gold cendre and the 1019 is a 10 cendre violet. It's a cool formulation, but it does have a little bit of gold in there to provide a beautiful shine and to prevent the color from going into an ashy, cool, icy white. We want a pure white, blonde white. We don't want her looking washed out. This is the end result from when that toner has sat in for about 20 to 25 minutes. We washed her, blow dried her, gave her a little straightening and a little bit of hairspray. And she's ready to go for the day. What do you think you guys? How gorgeous is this lift? Like I'm so proud of it. I think it's so beautiful. It's shiny. It's healthy. This is how you do a healthy white blonde. She blends in right into the wall guys. I hope you guys love my content today. Please remember to like and subscribe to support a small business as I really want to put out more of these videos giving free education on how to do hair for all types of hair.